you, you think so? Artificial intelligence will not formulate a model. Artificial intelligence will not formulate a model. All right, all right. Yes, okay. of course. Let me tell you. The, yeah. The, one one thing is artificial intelligence will not think of new problems. It is we that we think of new problems. So that's why we are special. We cannot be replaced. You understand? We we cannot be replaced because the search must be done. Artificial intelligence will not go to the lab to go and perform the experiment. Good evening, everybody. This is your Sahara Saab, and you're welcome to episode eight of Tales by Moonlight, where we bring you STEM education and tech career path that you could explore. Today will be the first of our episode in the, in the academic area. And tonight we have with us Dr. Kayode Oshinubi. I hope I got the pronunciation right. And it's been in Hana. Yeah, we, I've, been, I've been talking to him about this session for almost two years now and i'm so excited to have you here tonight and i appreciate the time you've made to be here and we appreciate the the, the other live studio guests that are here thank you for making our time out tonight to join us in tonight's session all right so a brief background on our guest tonight is a research fellow a phd person so we have to take our time and read his profile <laughs> So I got I got a little bit of your profile on researchgate.net. Yeah, researchgate.net. And it says, um, you say I obtained my PhD at the University Grenoble Alps. I'm trying to bring my French. That's in France, with yeah. a specialty in infectious disease modeling using statistical and mathematical approaches. And I graduated with distinction in my master's degree, an alumnus of Heidelberg Loret Forum, Germany, fellow African Scientific Institutes, that FASI, USA, and ROTF DCS fellow India. Wow. I have taught different courses in the field of mathematics, statistics, and computer science in higher institutions and mentor several diverse young researchers. You know, when I first met you, um, you were at um, Lasso. That was two years ago. Yes, you told me you were, you were a lecturer. You were lecturing at um, in, that's, um, Lagos State University, Lasso. That was two years ago. So, yeah. So, Dr. Dr. K, I, I call you Dr. K. I hope that's okay. That's fine. Awesome. So, Dr. K, just give us a brief introduction of yourself. I mean, as, at least I read some of your profile, but let's hear from you yourself. Um, yeah. yeah it's, it's afternoon in the U.S., so uh, it's midday. The US so uh, this afternoon yeah not a good evening so good afternoon everyone and also good evening everyone I'm I'm glad to be here I'm Kaede I shouldn't be I'm a Nigerian I like as well said I did my PhD I finished my PhD in October 2022 and then I've been a visiting researcher in Oxford uh, in University of Oxford and I've also been a visiting researcher in Bielefeld University recently. I joined the School of Informatics, Computing, and Cyber System in the United States in Arizona. So uh, we're postdoctoral research fellow, yeah, working also on special modeling of infectious disease. My specialty has been to model infectious diseases in mathematical and statistical tools. So um, this is real life application of mathematics. People always feel that mathematics is, is abstract, but the several ways you can apply mathematics and i'm happy that uh, i'm happy about this topic uh, godwin came up with and i uh, will be talking about the application of mathematics in real life and that is well, what i'm doing i mean i have my phd in applied mathematics and my background has been in math and minor in, in statistics but i mean if person who, is, who has been diverse recently i was thinking that i've not really been in the department of mathematics for many years. So I did my PhD in, in faculty of medicine. I When I was a visiting researcher in Oxford, I was in the department of computer science. When I was in Bielefe University, I was in faculty of biology. And I'm speaking from the school of informatics, computing and cyber systems. So you will wonder that, okay, this guy is a mathematician, but you will not hear me saying that I'm in the department of mathematics. You will not hear me saying that. So like I've always said that I'm a, multidisciplinary person, um, a diverse person, and uh, I believe in a real life application. And where I applied my mathematics is in terms of 
diseases and uh, recently we we are just uh, you know recovering from covid and this is one of the things that i've modeled in you know this is a real life situation and we use mathematical and statistical tools to uh, to model it so uh, that has been my my, my background and uh, of course yeah all right thank you so much for that comprehensive introduction see that you have a very diverse mathematical background and uh, that's taking you all over all over the world so yes. and also thank you for introducing the topic that that is the real life application of mathematics in fact this this is a why did i get into this i got i got into this stem education business because of a statement a classmate of mine made i studied uh, telecom engineering how did i get into this business of stem education and trying to advance stem education across africa for young africans is because of a statement my a colleague of mine made when we were graduating after our graduation he posted something on facebook that says something like oh, okay now i'm done with now i'm done with um i'm done with engineering school what's going to be the what's going to be the use of calculus i remember he mentioned calculus and he mentioned that he's done with school and he doesn't see the real life application of what he has studied for four years we sat in the same classroom studying telecom telecommunication engineering that's a subdivision of, of um, electrical engineering what? and you are telling me that after four years of education you don't know the real life application and you're using a, a an electronic device to post the same thing on the internet so it's, 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 it was it was a very um it was a turning point for me and that's why it's been over seven years now i've been doing this at, at various level and now i feel like i should talk to more people and bring other people's experience to bear so that we can have different views and help the next generation of young Africans to see the real application of whatever they are studying or doing currently the university, at the secondary school level and even at the university level as well. So thank you so much, Dr. K, for coming um, to the session tonight. And so let's, 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 I want us to take a top-down approach. Let's take it from your PhD level and let's see if we can narrow it down to someone in the secondary school to understand what we are doing here. In, in the intro video you sent me, you spoke about applied mathematics. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at the two versions of mathematics that could be, there could be pure mathematics, correct me if I'm wrong, versus mm -hmm. applied mathematics. So by you have taken the path of applied mathematics. So when, when I was also looking at your profile, I also noticed that, especially from the one from the researchgate.net, your skills, your skills and expertise, you said applied epidemiology, applied and computational mathematics, biomathematics, Epidem excuse me, epidemiological statistics, data visualization, data analysis, big data analysis, which is very needed in machine learning. So that's big data analysis, functional data analysis. But as I was, as I was going through most of your articles and research topics, I noticed that maybe for, the, for like the past two years, it's like you had something to, to say or to do around epidemiology, that is disease and infections. So is there something, is it the COVID that led you into that area or is there, is there a story behind why you focus so much on disease, diseases? Yeah, but before I go into that, I I, I will say that it's a pity, you know, in your intro, you said one of your friends, can you hear me properly? You yes, know, I'm in the maybe you could speak up a little bit up again. Sorry. Uh, I'm, in the, <laughs> I'm in the office, I'm in the office, so I can, I can speak. Oh, okay, 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 so sorry about that. They have so, to increase the volume uh, but, but, but But it's fine, it's fine. Yeah, but I'm going to increase my, my voice a bit. So, uh, like what you said in the intro, that your friend doesn't know the application of calculus, is it's sad. Whenever I'm teaching calculus, I've taught calculus for so many years. And whenever I'm, I want to teach a differentiation, I will tell them that, okay, that you you walk from your home to the classroom, you have performed calculus, you have performed differentiation. So that you you join us in this class, when a new person coming into this class, we are doing a kind of integration. You are adding into the system, and that is integration. So it's really terrible that, uh, you know, we have not, uh, people that have taught calculus over the years are not really talking about the real life application of uh, of all this this thing so that is that is the sad thing uh, about it so um concerning my research yes of course i was motivated by the global pandemic and that was that has been the focus of my research for some years now because uh, i was when the pandemic started i was thinking that how can we you know prefer solution to this pandemic using the mathematical and statistical tool we have, like doing a kind of prediction, doing a, a kind of forecast, and you know, and uh, through this, policymakers will be able to you know take some of the things we have we have uh, proposed, you know, and one of the the major goal of all what we are doing is to be able to make some 
uh, suggestions to policymakers. You know, so that 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 is the reason why we uh, we 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 do all these infectious disease uh, modeling. So of course, we are, the pandemic was one of my uh, uh, motivation to go into this uh, with uh, this part of uh, research infectious disease uh, model. Great, great, great. Thank you, thank you for that. Thank you for also explaining what calculus and differentiation and integration is all about in, in simpler terms. You know, I was looking at our chat, at our earlier chat, the very first time I contacted you and I introduced myself and I and you mentioned um, PD, that you specialize in PD, that's a partial differential equation. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, it's been a while. Let me refresh my memory. I, 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 mentioned, I mentioned in the chat that, oh yeah, we temporarily touched on PDEs when I was in school. We did OD, ordinary differential equations. Then we did uh, PDEs as well. As, as I'm, I'm just saying the terms from my head, but I really don't know. I can't remember what it was all about, but I knew that I knew that we did um, engineering mathematics for five semesters. So engineering mathematics one to engineering mathematics five. And these are some of the things that we're learning. So I, I said, let me quickly look at what PD was on the internet. And the definition I was getting, I was not really impressed with like, it doesn't make sense to me. So I don't know if you'd like to, to help us um, they, I, I know they they do. I don't. I don't know. I don't think they do it in high school. The, 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 the formula is partial differential equation. Yes. Uh, yes. Partial differential we, equation. We, we also have we also have OD, which is ordinary uh, differential equation. The partial differential equation is more of the higher uh, differential uh, oh, no. equation. We we also yeah we also use it in in disease modeling, especially when you are using when you are doing. There's a paper if you look at. Uh, my Google Scholar, you see that the only paper I've had in this 2023 is is we use PD to do the modeling, which we use what we call diffusion equations. So some of these uh, different different kind of equations are written in in form of uh, PD, like the heat equation. Uh, you know they are they are written in in form of PD, and of of course you can transform, you can move from partial differential equation to to ODE by you know invoking some conditions and then it will be it will be transformed to OD. So you use either OD or PD depending on the kind of problem you are trying to, to solve. Like the standard uh, disease model, what we call the SIR model, is is an OD model, you know. So if you are using that to solve uh, any problem, you you maintain an OD. If 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 you are talking about uh, diffusion, you know diffusion equation is a PD equation. So there are different uh, uh, sides, uh, OD and PD, and they all have the uh, way we 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 use them. But you know PD is more difficult than OD. OD is uh, <laughs> like I like I normally joke about it whenever I teach OD. I say it's OD. You know, it's ODE, it's ODE, so it's so simple. But the PD is 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 a, a bit complex and a bit difficult than than ODE. But let's ODE... let's let's go back to to your research for the for the SARS COVID thing. So we're talking about real life application of mathematics. So what was it exactly? What was the the model that you built? What's the model, and what did you build, and how did it solve a problem? Like what what problem exactly did you solve using mathematics? Yeah, of course. What we're trying to do, if you look at some of my papers, okay, let me start with the most recent, which we use uh, PD. Since you mentioned PD, we're trying to look at uh, how the disease is spread from one place to another because when it comes to disease spread when it comes to understanding disease it is not an homogeneous uh, thing it's it's more of heterogeneous there are a lot of environmental in terms of uh, temperature in terms of age in terms of geographical location and all of that so what that work was all about is to be able to say that okay if if this person is staying here and another person is staying here, what how has you know their mobility, their contact has helped to you know? I don't want to use the word help because we don't want disease to. That's not help. How has it influenced the spread of disease? So what so some of what some of my work is all about is to understand the spread of the disease. And when you can understand the spread of this, okay, how can we do a kind of intervention? And that was why in the model, we introduced what we call vaccination. And vaccination is a form of intervention. So there is always one of the major things when it comes to this is how you do a kind of uh, intervention. How do you deploy resources to curb the disease? So our model was able to introduce, to see the influence of you know, vaccination 
in the in the in the model and to be able to propose that okay vaccination has vac we should do more of aggressive vaccination because it has helped you know to to reduce deaths you understand it's not that you are not going to be infected with covid uh, people will still be infected with covid but it has helped us to have low low uh you know deaths you know and so uh, what we call low mortality so that so those, those are the things we have proposed i have propose a new model that looks at the age distribution in the population you know we have different age in in the population yeah, you know zero to 19 yeah, and all of that so I, I have proposed a, a two models one we use od one we use a matrices uh, uh, method you know so these are some of the things that I, I have i have proposed in my work to understand the spread of the disease to you know to be able to to predict and, and forecast and also to be able to make suggestion that okay this intervention, if you introduce it into the, if you introduce it to the population, you know, to the people, it's going to reduce the the spread. It's going to reduce the deaths, and uh, so these are some of the findings we are uh, we have done. Right. You know? and right. Like you can introduce all the social distance you are doing using uh, no mass. You can introduce it. You can represent them mathematically and say that okay, are they working or are they not working? So these are some of the things we have we have proposed. Great. So how do you do it? Like, so will you just are you just um sitting down there maybe in your room? Then you be like, oh, I can use mathematics to solve this one. And you maybe you're just walking in the park, walking your dog or something. You see a problem and, you, and you're like, okay, this mathematical equation so from somewhere can solve this particular problem. How do you get inspired? Like, excuse me. You must learn that you must learn to be innovative as a researcher. You must learn to be creative. You know, and um, sometimes it's all about when you are reflecting. You know, or when you hear that. Okay, recently also we are looking at monkeypox. There's a paper, my second paper in 2023, which will soon come out, is on monkeypox. You know, so uh, so in recent time, you know, we have we have used modeling approach to to talk about uh, to see how we can curb uh, monkey positive. So, so most time the inspiration like you have said is sometimes when you are reflecting is sometimes when you are reading and then you you say okay let me do this and sometimes when you hear about a particular outbreak of a disease then you all right dr k thank you for the awesome reply so far and um we're learning about applied mathematics so i want us to look at it we are we are we are coming downwards right now so my goal is to be able to have a high school and SS students, senior high school students, students, when they view this content, maybe they have hopes. Because right now it looks like if you are studying mathematics at the university level, you are likely going to end up as a lecturer. By looking at your profile, you see that you've basically worked in almost, as I mentioned, I mentioned um, big data analysis. That means you are needed in machine learning area as well. So, so you have like you have range, as I was saying. You can virtually be anywhere, and as yourself you mentioned earlier on. So let's look at the two. Let's look at mathematics from two angles: that's pure mathematics and applied mathematics. I, I have some definitions here. It says that applied mathematics is the application of mathematical methods by different fields, such as physics, engineering, medicine. So I believe um, your SARS-CoV project right now or research. It's in, the, it's in the medical field, biology, finance, business, computer science, and industry. Thus, applied mathematics is a combination of mathematical science and specialized knowledge. So that means I, I, I'm assuming now that you have some medical, along the way, you've picked up some medical knowledge, obviously, as a researcher. Then now let's look at pure mathematics definition. It's kind of weird. I find the definition very weird because it says that pure mathematics is a study of mathematical concepts independently of any application outside mathematics. I mean, why, why should anyone be doing that? Why should, why should someone be studying mathematical yeah. concepts? Yeah most, time, yeah. yeah, most time in pure math, you know, you deal with theorems, hypothesis, lemma, and all of that. So it is, it is what we call like an abstract mathematics, you know, where you are not, when you don't even know in which area this is uh, applicable, you know, Sometimes they will be studying ball, you know, an open ball, a closed ball. They'll be stuck studying some topological, you know, spaces and all of that. So uh, these are some of the areas. Uh, so for me, I always advise people to do applied mathematics because it is applicable to 
different fields. Like you have rightly said, you can you can move to any any place. You know, you can go to any any field and all of that. So you 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 enjoy more of applied mathematics. You can work in the industry, like you have said. You can you can be a lecturer. You can you can work in big firm. You can work in some. Uh, some medical field you can work with the center for disease control if you are doing a disease uh, modeling like me you can you can work in an ecological uh, place so it's it's applicable into different uh, different uh, places great so 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 if you're a young person out there and you are hearing dr dr k talk about the application that means if you are very good in mathematics and you and you and they are telling you maybe they're joking they're cracking jokes with you that you end up maybe being a classroom teacher or secondary school teacher, you know, have money. Because across the world, um, teachers are underpaid. It's, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a hot topic in the U.S. And of course, in Africa, teachers are not like, they're not being taken care of very well. Then imagine you're studying something like mathematics. So it might just be some after-school teacher or something. So be encouraged. There's so much that you can do with mathematics. And as I yes. said, Applied mathematics, right, is a way to go if you really want to make something out of yourself in in, in academia. So, do you do uh, what about in computer science? Is mathematics really needed in that area? Yeah, of course. We the basis of most program is linear algebra. Linear algebra is mathematics, but you cannot you cannot be vast in doing data sciences data analytics machine learning without having a background in, in linear algebra. So linear algebra helps you to have a kind of solid foundation in in becoming a, a good programmer. So uh, that's an angle where mathematics is applied to. So machine learning data science we are talking about they are, they are in, in the computer science department. And like I told you, I'm currently in the in the school of informatics computing and uh, cyber system. This is this is more of a computer science school. So uh, you know, so it is. Yeah, it is applicable everywhere. So that is it. Great. Thank you so much, yeah. Dr. K. Let's move on, um, Dr. K. What 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 is so? Uh, as I was doing my research, looking at some of your work, one of the things that came up was heat map. So mathematical modeling. Can you shed more light on what mathematical? I have a, I have a little definition here. Mathematical modeling is a process of describing a real-world problem in mathematical terms, usually in the form of equations, then mm -hmm. using these equations to help understand the original problem and also to discover new features about the problem. Modeling mm -hmm. lies at the heart of much of our understanding of the world, and it allows engineers to design technology of the future. With modeling, you can travel to the edge of the universe, peer, peer into the heart of atom, and understand the future it goes on and on and on so you practically how have you how how have you been using mathematical modeling this give us tell us what mathematical model model is yeah, like you have already said is is how you model real, real life situation okay there is a disease sphere and then you want to i'm just using my field as an example and you want to understand how the disease disease is spread. there's a fundamental equation that you have to know that you have to use which is the SIR model, susceptible, infected, and recover. You, you must know those people that are susceptible, the susceptible population of the of the population. And also then you use SIR model, you know, to, to model down. If you want to, like I told you, if you want to introduce interventions like uh, face masks, you know, uh, social distancing, you you can introduce it by going to the compartments of where the transmission rate, because in the model, you are going to put what we call transmission rate or what we call contact with how disease is spread from Cairo day to Godwin, you know. And then if that is what you want to do. You don't want the disease to, to... So you go and say, okay, beta minus maybe A, and the A stands for what? Or no, you say M. The M stands for no smarts. You understand? So okay. you, have to, you have to introduce a parameter, you know, to reduce the, 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 con the contact uh, rate, which is going to uh, also reduce the the spread of the disease. So this is how to model real life situation. In fact, mathematical model now is used to model. You know, you, you can use it to model. You know, crime. You can use it to model reason outbreak. You just before you can write this system of mathematical equation, you must understand the phenomenon. Like in disease now, you must understand the disease spread. You know, you must understand. When you want to model a crime, you must understand how does this crime work. Okay, how does 
um, maybe people who take marijuana, how, how do they behave? You know, this is what we call social social uh, modeling in, in mathematics, you know. So okay. How do they how do they behave? So these are the things uh, you need to really understand. So you must be able to have a, a knowledge of what is really going on in the things you, you want to model. And then with, with what with what the knowledge you have, you, you write a system of questions for them, then you can do some mathematical analysis and all of that. Okay, so that's mathematical modeling in a nutshell. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you so much. All right, that's okay. So at least we are we are approaching down, we are moving down, down to our our, our, our level to we're moving from the PhD level to our first degree and going to the secondary school level for now. So now 2023 has it's a year that it seems to be very big on artificial intelligence. I mean, towards the end of in November 2023, OpenAI um, released Chat GPT. Chat GPT, which is their um, chatbots, artificial intelligence chatbots. Mm -hmm. And that kind of like flood, open a floodgate for artificial intelligence as we entered or as we're entering 2023. And I've seen that, as I mentioned earlier, AI, artificial intelligence, and machine learning go hand in hand and big data, because obviously you have to feed the model with enough data for it to be yeah. able to predict. Mm -hmm. to give you predict, I think chat GPT itself means um, generative pretexts, or is it pretext? G generative pretext. Yeah, it's a pre-trained machine, a pre-trained machine learning um, system. It's not it's not fabricating new information, but it's only spilling out what it has been fed or trained on already. So we're, we're going to ask you. I was watching. I was recently watching an interview by Microsoft CEO. Satya Nadella. And one of the things he said is that he mentioned a particular course he struggled with when he was in, in, in college. And it was like, now he can ask the bots to explain the things to him. And myself personally as well, I am learning a particular programming language right now, which I've been struggling with through the, um, the lockdown. But now with chat GPT, I, all I do is do I tell it to explain this concept to me. I'll just copy the code. And, and paste it and tell it explain this code to me like i'm five and the bot to go on to say imagine you have a box and there's other smaller box in it so that's how it explains this to me and it's it very fantastic so i see it as more let me not tell you my view yet i want to hear your view since you're my guest tonight and i want to know what what are your views on ai what 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 how do you see ai and how do you think it should be used in terms since we are talking about academics in terms of academics so one of the things um the CEO also mentioned, um, Nadia, was like, we can feed this system with all the mathematical equation in the world and it will be helping us solve, solve the problems. I don't know if that will put you out of job. I, I don't know if you're worried that artificial intelligence will take your job. Do you, you think so? Artificial intelligence will not formulate a model. Artificial intelligence will not formulate a model. All right. All right. Yes, okay. of course. Let me tell you. The, yeah. the, one, one thing is, artificial intelligence will not think of new problems. It is we that we think of new problems. So that's why we are special. We cannot be replaced. You understand? We, we cannot be replaced because research must be done. Artificial intelligence will not go to the lab to go and perform the experiment. Uh, so uh, I, I'm not worried, but I, I'm really happy that we are we are going to this thing. You know, I was in Germany and the house I lived while I was there, there is a, a robot that sweep the floor for us, you know? Oh, wow. I came here. I came here this year. And as the US, living, you move from Germany to the, the US? Yeah. In the US, yeah. Where, where I'm living, <laughs> where I'm living, you know, some people, you know, they order food. Do you know that it is a robot that comes to deliver the food? Wow. Interesting. And I, I saw that recently and I was like, ah, this, this is, this is unique. It, it, it just drive the robot. There's, it's, it's inside a small, a small car like this, you know, the food will have in it and it just drive itself down to the location to deliver the food. So you can see that those that do deliver now, they are losing jobs. Yeah. Those that do deliver, they are losing jobs. So, but there are some. Godwin, how will you replace people that talk about the, that concept of the robots? Okay. You That's can't. a good argument. Yeah. You can't. You can't replace them. So, <laughs> a robot will not conduct this zoom. It is human that we conduct, you know, uh, this zoom. So, you know, that, that is it. So, I'm not working, but the concepts are good. I, I, there was a day I, I just, I played around the chat GDP and uh, 
I was, I was, I like what I saw, and I said, okay, this is innovative. Innovations are good. You understand? Of course, it will reduce human to human. For us in the disease model, we will feel that, okay, doing this kind of pandemic is going to reduce human to human contact. You understand? When a robot is coming to deliver food for me, instead of a, a, a delivery man, you know, the disease will not be able to spread. Yeah. Uh, from, yeah. So it's, it will reduce. So for us in infectious disease, we'll say, okay, this is, this is, uh, you know, uh, you know, you know, innovative. So, so for me, I'm I'm not worried that. Uh, um, but how do you this... see? How do you see it's in terms? You said you've not used it much, but how do you predict in it to be used in the academia? In terms of, as I mentioned myself personally, I use it for it to explain concepts that I think I don't understand, so I don't have to wait for my mentor to come and tell me what to do. It's been helping yeah, we, me so we, far. We, have, you, yeah. have you forgotten that we write a lot of codes in, in, in academia? So if if you are getting errors in your code, you feed it to the chat GDP. So it's, it's, it's going to be helpful, you know? It's going, to, it's going to also enhance research. It's going to help uh, research. But my fear and my worry is people that goes there that tells it to go and help them write stuff, they will know that you wrote this. It is not you that think to write this thing yourself. So... The, the novelty of writing might be missing, you know. The novelty of writing might be might, might be missing. So somebody, some people can even say that you should go and write their project for them. And people will know that you, you got yes. it from an, an AI system. It was not you that sat down to think. So the world, the world still need thinkers. The world still appreciate people that can think, people that can prefer solutions. A, a, a robot will not prefer those solutions. A robot so, will not, you know. So yesterday I saw um, a tweet from OpenAI themselves They are that they are building an, another tool that would be able to detect if the write-up or the content was pro- written by an AI or a human being. <laughs> so it's getting very interesting. Yeah. yeah. So they so. themselves, yeah. Because, because the worries of people, so you know some people in academia will have bring us some criticism. So because the worry of those in academia will say, okay, how do we checkmate? And that's what they are trying to do, to still checkmate their system in such a way that we still encourage, you know, a kind of, uh, you know, novelty where people can, uh, you know, do things uh, really, not, uh, you know, going to one AI and uh, getting out results without putting in the hard work, you know, that is necessary. Great, great, great. Thank you so much for your insight on artificial intelligence in 2023 and how it can be used in the academia. And lastly, uh, let's let's explore our last set of topics. So one one like as I said, the the whole idea of this um of this series and of this of this session is to find a real world mathematical application. This, so there's a young it's a young child studying mathematics, primary school, junior high school, secondary school at the university level, getting frustrated and trying to figure out. So what where will I ever use these things in my life? Obviously, you've told us. Some some of these applications. Do you think that, I mean, over your over the years in academia, do you think that the way mathematics is being taught? Do you think what what are your suggestions? How how do you think that we can make it more interesting, or how do you think we sh- we should or it should be taught at the various level before someone even gets to university for them to see? Like like you said, you said um, you tell your students in your calculus class. That for them to walk from their um, hostel to the to the lecture room, that's differential equation. Then you said the other one is integration. You could actually learn this in the university. Like after I think this was since my second year, they actually understood what integration, like the word integration and the process, what it actually meant. Even after doing it in, in secondary school, it, was, it took me second year in university for me to even understand what integration was all about. So what 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 are your insights and what do you think we should do to help? Enhance the way mathematics is being taught and make it more interesting. Yeah, we must we must change our curriculum. Our curriculum needs to be changed. We must change the way our school structure is. A student that wants to be an engineer, you know, should should focus on engineering from the beginning. What is a student that wants to do engineering doing government for? What is doing uh, biology for? Sincerely, but if you want to be a biomedical engineer, you can do biology. So we must start. We must change our secondary school education, and we must start also having a technique, a technical school. In France, there are technical school. Not everybody goes to the normal. They go to technical to go and learn the handwork. To go and learn how to become a mechanic. To go and learn how to. These are technical things. So they are not saying that okay, they, they, they want to go and do you know they are doing general course, irrelevant course that are that are not necessary. You know, so we must start to change our curriculum and then we must make sure that teaching 
it's interesting to people. You know, some people go to, to become a teacher because they don't have any other choice. So when they get there, do you expect them to give the best? No. Training and retraining. Some lecturers are still using the notes they use in the 1990s when the world is evolving. Some people did programming in school. They didn't use one computer like this. All the code they were writing was in the exam, was in inside paper. They didn't go to the, to the system to go and run the program. In France, in the US, if you are teaching uh, programming, Java, you, there is a practical section where it's going to, they call it lab section, where they practicalize uh, how much of those things we do in Africa. So we need to revamp. We need to fund the education. We need to increase salaries of teachers. We need to encourage them people so that people, it will be viable. So that people will have interest to join, uh, to be in the in the teaching uh, world. Because if 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 a teacher has not was not able to do his job, you cannot ask today that has passed to me what integration is the cap unless they are not brilliant. Because whenever I wanted to, I want to start calculus is hard, so I must start from a simple case so that they will have a kind of interest. Did you say calculus is hard? Can, yeah, it's hard. Oh, it's really? Hard. Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> it's not a simple thing. No, for me, it's easy. I'm a mathematician, you know? Yeah. But I, but I, I found it that, easy when I was in school too. I, but when I, I was know, getting higher to the higher I know, order... I know, <laughs> I, I know whenever I teach it, uh, more than half don't even pass it, you know? Uh, so I, I've, I've lectured it for so many years. So do you say, do so, you think, do you think, sorry for cutting you in, do you think is the way they learned it in, 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 in their secondary school that made them not, because in my school in Ghana, we had a um, Francophone, my school, was, my school was very diverse with Africans. Like we had more Africans, like a lot of Africans, like it was a very diverse um, um, school that I attended in Ghana. And the, the Francophones especially, they were all good in mathematics. And when I dig in a little further, I realized that the, it was like those calculus and the hard maths and the, and the elective maths was like a basic maths for them in, in their country. That's guys from Togo and, and, and Benin. Mm -hmm. So like they didn't, in fact, they were teaching us, like they were teaching with the Ghanaians and the Nigerians in the class. So do you think that probably is the way it's being taught at the senior high school level? I'm talking about calculus now more specifically. Yeah. That, is it think that's where the problem the problem lies? Yes, of course. Of course. This is the way it is taught. When the foundation is not good, huh? Godwin, you are building a, a house and the foundation is faulty. How do you expect the house not to collapse? It's going to collapse. So the foundation matters. The foundation matters. So it is the foundation that is faulty. That's why they don't know all these things. And teachers also, those teachers also have to upgrade themselves. The world is evolving. You understand? So Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. Great. So I think we'll, we'll, we'll be wrapping up here. Perkins, do you want to ask a question? I know Perkins personally. So do you have any question to our guest tonight? It's a very, it's not an everyday topic. This topic is not bringing you money immediately. It's for academia. So <laughs> it makes me for tonight. <laughs> oh, no, yes. really, really understand. Well, in fact, I, I really like that point to raise on the cost aspect because uh, majority of our case studies mostly focusing on like the old theory system. I think now the world is changing and they have to, you know, add new values to our academic system. And uh, I believe that if they are able to do that, you know, changing the curriculum and uh, adding up something different, like more than how things used to be, I think it will help a lot. It will help a lot. In fact, like what you were saying is exactly. In fact, when we, when when I was in school, I really battled certain things personally. You know, like uh, a technical student worrying themselves with other courses, like it's really annoying, and it will even take much of your time. And you have to write notes and other stuff, like <laughs> while you, instead of focusing on your, you know, your major aspect of education, you are just you know divided at things. At the end of the at the end of the whole year, or uh, maybe after you are done with school, the course that you even learn, you couldn't even use it as productive to yourself. So I think a lot has to be done with our education system. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Pekins, for that contribution. You know, um, and Dr. K, in Ghana, Ghana has, I think my partner sent me a link and it was showing that for, the, for those going to secondary school, they can apply to a STEM to a STEM only school that they can apply. So I don't. I was, I was amazed saying it. Like if, if you are going to school now in Ghana, and 
unlike in Nigeria, so there's, there's a little bit of difference in the way the academic and the, the things are structured here. Yeah, so there's been a change too, like in the curriculum in Ghana in the past three years, and this new STEM school, they call them STEM schools. So you're just going to those schools to learn STEM-related at the secondary school, at the senior secondary school level. You're going to learn STEM-related um, subjects and topics only. So I, I, I've seen some improvement. I've not been in touch with the Nigerian system in a while now for at least two years, but I don't know what changes are happening. So yeah, so that's that's my final thoughts on that. So um, Dr. K, give us some final words on applied mathematics. Someone who is in junior high school, probably doesn't know anything about mathematics. What can I do with mathematics? And um, yeah, your final words for wrap yeah, up. You, you, you can do a lot with mathematics. Mathematics has taken me all over the world and uh, it can also take you all over the world. Don't limit yourself to being a teacher or being a lecturer. You can, you can decide to not be in the academia, you can decide to, uh, to be in the industry, you can be a machine learning engineer, you can be a machine learning expert, a data analyst, a data, uh, a, a data scientist, you know, you can be in research and development, you can be, in, you are used to in so many uh, ways. So you have to just focus on which part of the applied mathematics you want to uh, to do. I can decide to go and to be in the CDC or NCDC because my mathematics is applied to infectious uh, disease. So, uh, so this, these are my final words. Be focused, uh, get sk be skillful, get skills uh, because the world is looking for people that are, that are skillful. So you can't just be studying it where you don't even know how to do, use a Python uh, software or algo software or, or Java or or Maple or MATLAB. So you must you must try to ensure that you have at least some skills, you know. So that's my final word. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Dr. T. Dr. Kayo Day or Shinobi for our guest tonight. We really appreciate your time spent with us telling us um, the real life application of mathematics and your research that you've been doing in the in the infectious diseases area. We really appreciate your 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 time here and we appreciate what you're doing to the world. Um, applying mathematics to real world problem. Thank you so much once again for your time and God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah,